flaming garbage fire that is American politics continues to flame away, and Al Frank Franken has been caught. Franken has been caught in the blaze. Plus, we'll talk about the latest with Roy. We'll do that in just a moment. But first, the news. So, the news today: Al Franken likes grabbing boobs. Really, like this is the news today. So, Al Franken uh, is now being accused by an LA anchor named Leanne Tweeden. She's on KBC. She tweeted on Thursday morning that inspired by Representative Jackie Spire, a Democrat who encouraged anyone who had been victimized by a member of Congress to step forward, she decided to tell her story. In an essay published on KBC's website, according to DailyWire.com, Tweeden described her encounter with Al Franken, the senator from Minnesota, the man who is supposedly the new conscience of the Senate. Yesterday, he was ripping up Justice Don Willett, the Texas Supreme Court Justice Don Willett, ripping him up and down because Texas Justice Don Willett, who is very funny on Twitter, had once tweeted something about how he wanted to legalize marriage to bacon because he liked bacon so much. And Al Franken thought that this was a slap at the gay community somehow, which is weird because gay people aren't bacon. But in any case, Al Franken uh, apparently sexually harassed slash assaulted uh, Leanne Tweeden. She said, in an essay, she describes her encounter with Franken, whom she says used comedy as an excuse to be inappropriate because comedians in Hollywood apparently are all inappropriate from Louis C.K. to David Letterman. Tweeden, a former model, was on her ninth tour with the USO and expected to be the event MC, but quickly discovered that Franken had penned a special skit for her to perform with him, and he'd included a kiss that he insisted they practice beforehand. So here is the, here is the actual essay. Quote, he repeated that actors really need to rehearse everything and that we must practice the kiss. I said, okay, so he would stop badgering me. We did the line leading up to the kiss, and then he came at me, put his hand on the back of my head, mashed his lips against mine, and aggressively stuck his tongue in my mouth. Hey, first of all, um, you know, that is sexual assault, but I will say that every actor in Hollywood has apparently done this to every actress in Hollywood. Like, talk to any actress in this town, you'll see this is a very common occurrence. This is not letting Al Franken off the hook by any means. It's just to show you that in Hollywood, this stuff is supremely prevalent. He said, I mean, she says, I immediately pushed him away with both of my hands against his chest and told him if he ever did that to me again, I wouldn't be so nice about it the next time. I walked away. All I could think about was getting to a bathroom as fast as possible to rinse the taste of him out of my mouth. <laughs> okay. She said she didn't report Franken's behavior or the alleged assault to superiors, but did her best to stay out of Franken's way the rest of the tour. He repaid her, she says, by peppering her with insults and drawing devil horns on pictures she signed for the troops. Then, on the flight home, as Tweeden slept in her Kevlar vest and helmet, she says Franken groped her while he posed for this photo. Do we have a picture? Do we have this photo? Um, this, is the, this is the one that we had, uh, we had, I had asked to pull. Um, in any case, it is the, it, it's a picture of Al Franken reaching out, and she's sleeping. She's wearing a Kevlar vest, and he's standing over her big grin on his face uh, and his hands poised above her boobs. Right, there it is. Yeah, there is, there is a senator from Minnesota uh, groping or, or attempting to grope a sleeping woman. Just all class is, is Senator Al Franken. And um, she says, I couldn't believe me. I couldn't believe it. He groped me without my consent while I was asleep. I felt violated all over again, embarrassed, belittled, humiliated. How dare anyone grab my breast like this and think it's funny? I told my husband everything that happened and showed him the picture. She claimed she was too scared to complain, worried about the potential backlash and possibility that lobbing a sexual harassment allegation against a famous comedian would have repercussions to her career, which it would. The way that it works in Hollywood, because Hollywood is a scummy place, is that if you complain about sexual harassment, no one will hire you ever again. Okay, this is reality, and it's horrifying. This is, it's, it's really disgusting. You're considered a, a hard to put up with. You're considered somebody who doesn't get it and isn't cool in Hollywood if you don't put up with men acting like pervs or anyone acting like a perv. If somebody gropes you and you, and you say anything about it, this makes you a prude in Hollywood, seriously. Uh, Al Franken has now responded to the allegations, saying he sends his sincerest apologies and that the photo was, quote, clearly intended to be funny. Oh, boy. Um, he says, I certainly don't remember the rehearsal for this skit in the same way, but I send my sincerest apologies to Leanne. As to the photo, it was clearly intended to be funny, but wasn't. I shouldn't have done it. Al Franken is in serious poo-poo now. He's in serious trouble. And we're about to find out whether Democrats are flaming hypocrites because they, of course, have been calling for Roy Moore to be expelled from the Senate if he were elected and forever Republicans distance themselves from Roy Moore, the, uh, the Senate Republican from Alabama. Quick correction I want to make on the show. So I keep saying for the last two days, the snot has addled my brain from this cold, but I kept saying that Richard Burr was the senator from Alabama. It's Richard Shelby, of course. In any case, uh, the Democrats have been calling for for Roy Moore to step down, anyone who does not call for Roy Moore to step down is obviously uh, is obviously horrifying. But are they saying the same things about Al Franken? Well, we know that uh, several of the several of the senators have been running away from questions about this. They they've been legitimately like running from the press, and that makes perfect sense because none of this matters to the you if if it's a member of your own political party, right? It's it, there's a bunch of uh, the, the, Sasha Stone. 
uh, is uh, is a writer over at I guess Awards Daily. And she said, "Sorry, but if what se- but but if what Al Franken is doing in that photo is sexual harassment, we're going to need a bigger boat. Come on, people, snap out of it. Um, if someone did this to my wife, I'd punch them in the face. How's that? You know, I think this is a pretty good standard, right? I think I think this is a good standard for sexual harassment slash sexual assault. If someone did this to your wife, would you punch them in the face? If you're a dude, or if you're a girl, would you feel like you should punch them in the face? If the answer is yes, then it's probably. I, I feel like that's a that's a pretty good standard. So uh, Jean Shaheen." Right, the Democrat from New Hampshire, she said, quote, I'm a member of the ethics committee, so I can't comment. Oh, ho, 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 ho. So I guess this is how it's going to go now, right? Women, Democratic women, not quite standing by other women. And I guess uh, I had heard that, that Gillibrand says that, quote, she, so now Kirsten Gillibrand has said that the allegations against Franklin, Franken are deeply disturbing, says she believes the woman who accused him. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty astonishing stuff. This is the state of American politics now. So I have a proposal to fix all of this. Um, it's actually two proposals. So proposal number one is that we should actually just um, have all of the Congress people stay home. I think the remote voting is the best solution to this. So all of these senators should be forced to live in the districts from which they spring and live at home with their wives uh, and their husbands. This is the way that, that sexual harassment would, would, I think, be minimized. Uh, not because these people aren't scumbags when they're in their home district, but because Washington, D.C. is a scummy place filled with scummy people. But the other way we can do this is it's time for, I think, robot Congress. So I think we need to elect robots to, to Congress. Maybe, maybe that's a little extreme. But in any case, uh, we will see whether the Democrats are giant hypocrites or whether the Democrats are not giant hypocrites in very, very short order. Obviously, some are and some aren't. What's funny about this is that Democrats really don't have any risk in getting rid of Franken. If they get rid of Franken, the, the governor of Minnesota right now is a Democrat. So will appoint a replacement. Probably somebody like Keith Ellison, who is an absolute anti-Semite. So we'll actually get someone worse than Al Franken in the Senate politically uh, if, if Al Franken is replaced. So Democrats don't have much to worry about. By Matt Iglesias' logic yesterday at, at Vox.com, they have no excuse not to get rid of him. I do also want to do this flashback because you're seeing a lot of Democrats these days talk about how the Clintons should go. And, the, you know, it's time for Bill Clinton to go. And, and now they're all hot and bothered about sexual harassment. I am excited. I, w- I will say this. I'm excited that Roy Moore is now forcing all Democrats to be consistent about sexual harassment, right? This is the only reason why they're pretending to care about Al Franken. I don't think they deeply care about Al Franken. They certainly didn't care about Bill Clinton being a disgusting piece of garbage until the last five minutes or so. This is the last year, I believe, Joy Behar saying that Bill Clinton's accusers were tramps on national television. I wonder if she missed the opportunity to address it in a way that the public would understand that that's just well, not how you behave. Well, the big I, issue. I, I would like to apologize to those tramps that have slept with my husband. Okay, so she's calling all of them tramps, right? This isn't until the last five minutes. Now it's believe the women, believe the women. The only reason the Democrats are saying this, of course, is because they want Roy Moore gone. The networks, if you remember during the last election cycle, when Donald Trump brought up all of the accusers against Bill Clinton, the networks attacked Trump for having the temerity to bring up these accusers. Donald Trump proving nothing is off limits, dramatically intensifying his attacks on former President Bill Clinton's history with women. I looked at the New York Times. Are they going to interview Juanita Broderick? Are they going to interview Paula Jones? Are they going to interview Kathleen Willey? In one case, it's about exposure. In another case, it's about groping and fondling and touching against a woman's will. And rape. And rape. The rape accusation is decades old and discredited. Should and that big be- settlements, massive settlements. $850,000 for and Paula Jones. lots of other things. They were referring to a trio of women who say Bill Clinton made unwanted sexual advances in the 80s and 90s. Mr. Clinton denies it. Two of the cases were plagued by factual discrepancies. Still, the accusations linger and will be a focus of GOP ads against Hillary Clinton. Okay, so look how the media was downplaying all this until two seconds ago when Bill Clinton's desiccated political body was thrown right under that train because now it's time to get Republicans. Really amazing how this has happened. Now listen, if inadvertently we end up raising our standards for politicians because everybody is, is, is so focused on getting rid of the other guy that they're forced to abide by their own standards, maybe something good comes out of this. Maybe we actually all have new standards. I don't think that's what's going to happen, though. I think that this will be a five-minute break from, from partisan politics dominating, and then we'll go right back to being terrible about electing terrible people. I mean, remember, Democrats were so insane back in the 90s over this thing that Bill Clinton, who was a perjurer and a sexual molester, uh, you know, Bill Clinton was applauded by Democrats. After he was impeached, Democrats came to the White House and they gave him a standing ovation. I asked the American people to move with me to go on from here, to rise above the rancor, 
to overcome the pain and division, to be a repairer of the breach, all of us, to make this country as one America what it can and must be for our children in the new century about to dawn. Thank you very much. And they're all, this is literally after he was impeached by the House, right? And they're all standing there clapping for him. You know, the reason that I bring this up is not what aboutism. I've been calling for Roy Moore to step down. On Fox News yesterday, I said that Roy Moore should step down on Fox and Friends, right? So President Trump's favorite show, I said directly on that show that, that Roy Moore should absolutely step down from his, from his Senate run. So this is not what, what about is only applies if you say that you're excusing Roy Moore's behavior because of Bill Clinton. The reason that I'm bringing up Bill Clinton is because I believe that the standard for American politicians was set in the 1990s, and that has been the consistent standard all the way until now. And so if Democrats want to get rid of Roy Moore, and this is going to force them to get rid of Al Franken too, good. Good. Now, with all of that said, I do think that we should be careful about what exactly are the standards for sexual harassment and sexual assault. Like, we actually have a picture of Al Franken, you know, purporting to grab a woman's breasts while she's sleeping. That's pretty bad stuff. I want to make sure that the allegations that we see are credible. The reason that I said that Moore is, I mean, that picture is a picture. I mean, come on, there's a picture for you. But, if it, but the reason that I've said that Roy Moore should step down is because the allegations are credible. I, when, when Ted Cruz, for example, during his campaign was accused to have slept with a bunch of his campaign aides, the allegations were not credible because there was no, there were no names that were named. All of the women denied it. There was not any, there was not any corresponding information. There was, I remember during the campaign, there was a, a rape allegation that the media were not widely reporting against Donald Trump, and that's because the accuser's story basically fell apart pretty quickly. So the allegations have to be credible, but with that said, uh, you know, I think that if, we're gonna, if our new standard is that credible allegations are treated as we don't want these people anywhere near the levers of power, I think that's a good thing. Maybe inadvertently we'll stumble into something better here. Okay, so before I go any further, and I do have a big announcement about my, my college lecture tour in just a moment, first I want to say thank you to our sponsors over at Birch Gold. So right now, if it feels like the economy is, uh, is doing really well, but it still feels like it might be a little bit inflated, and you think that maybe the stock market's going to take a dive sometime in here, if you're concerned that uh, there are some, there's going to be some shock to the real estate market, if you, or if you just want to hedge your bet, uh, that's why it's time to buy some precious metals. Go over to birchgold.com slash Ben, and they'll give you a comprehensive 16-page kit showing how gold and silver can protect you, how you can legally move your IR plus rating with the better physical precious for this students who have wanted necessary funding request hosting an event because of my crazy schedule we're actually limiting next year's tour to 12 campuses so be fast about this be sure to follow all the steps in the application and present a good proposal for why you think your school should be one of the 12. check out yaf.org slash ben shapiro tour that's yaf.org slash ben shapiro tour to submit an application and uh, that will allow us to get back to you faster as well okay so Meanwhile, uh, while all of this is going on in the Senate, uh, the, the continuing saga of Roy Moore uh, continues apace. And I want to talk about some of the solutions to Roy Moore saga, but one of the things, that, that, one of the things I find really kind of gross about the way that, that sexual allegations are treated, uh, it, it's gross on, on, in two aspects. One is that sexual allegations without any other corroborating proof, uh, if, you, if you say, show me some corroborating evidence, people go nuts. And if you say there is corroborating evidence, now you have to show me why it's not true, people go nuts. So there's no solution, right? Roy Moore's lawyers put out a defense yesterday that was so weak and so strained, and yet people are hanging their hat on this peg. I remember that during the, uh, during the campaign, there was some of this with regard to President Trump. And I remember with Bill Clinton, there was some of the same sort of stuff. With regard to Trump, I recall that there was an allegation that Trump had sexually assaulted a woman on a plane and people were going back and trying to figure out whether the armrests the arm on that kind of, kind of plane went up or down. And this was supposed to be used as proof that Trump had never done any of this. I'm seeing something similar happening with, with Roy Moore. The question you have to ask yourself is whether these allegations are credible. Now, you can still make the case. And I'm getting letters from people in Alabama who are saying, listen, I'm not going to vote for Doug Jones. I don't want you to vote for Doug Jones. I didn't vote for Hillary Clinton, right? I thought that Donald Trump was kind of a scuzz. I didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. I'm not saying you have to vote for Doug Jones. I'm saying now is the time for all of you folks to be planning a write-in campaign for somebody who is not credibly accused of child molestation. Is that a terrible idea? Is that a horrible idea? Now, I didn't vote at the top of the ticket. I think it's possible to do that too. I understand why you don't want Doug Jones in the Senate. I don't want him in the Senate either. I don't want a pro-abortion Democrat in the Senate. But that does not mean that we get to brush off accusations that are like this. So 
let, let, let's go through Moore's lawyer's defense because this is this is pretty bad. There, there are a couple more allegations, by the way, uh, that Moore groped people. There are two new accusers uh, who are suggesting that, that Moore, Moore was harassing them. One of them was a high school girl who said that when Moore was in his 30s, he called up her high school, pulled her out of trig class to ask her on a date, which it, like called the principal's office and said, can I speak to X? And the girl went to the office and she said, what's up? And he said, I want to ask you on a date. What are you doing? She said, well, I'm in trig class right now. Okay. In any case... Moore's lawyer, uh, let's say his legal team is not the strongest. Uh, and when I say not the strongest, I mean it's really quite terrible. Like, the, the, I don't know whether he went to the, his lawyers went to the My Cousin Vinny School of Lawyering, but they don't have the street smarts of Joe Pesci. Here is, uh, I mean, this, this, okay, in any case, here was, here was Roy Moore's attorney. At, at a certain point, you just have to laugh at this stuff because we are so down the rabbit hole, folks. I mean, we are, we are in Alice in Wonderland. Uh, and here is, uh, here is Roy Moore's lawyer yesterday trying to make excuses for Roy Moore attempting to date girls who were like 15 or 16 years old in Alabama in 1979. He's talking to a uh, he's talking to a um, an anchor uh, on MSNBC, and this anchor uh, the anchor's name is uh, Ali Veshi, I guess. And uh, and watch Ali Veshi, I guess, has some background uh, that he thinks that he can discern because Ali Veshi is a brown person. Uh, and this does not go well from Roy Moore's lawyer. But point is this: what does you know, Ali's each culture has a, have to do with dating a fourteen-year-old. Uh, I'm 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 not finished with the context of it. Well, but please answer. Point, what, point is Ali's, is, what does Ali Velshi's background have to do with dating under children, fourteen-year-old girls? Sure. In other in other countries, there's arrangement through parents for what we would refer Ali's to as from consensual marriage. So Ali's from Canada. I understand that. And Al Ali's also spent time in other countries, so of which I've gone to. So it's not a bad thing. I, I don't, I don't know where you're going. Stephanie, to answer, but here's the answer to your question. <laughs> Ali's from Canada. Yeah, in Canada, they have a real record of, of people trying to hit up 14-year-olds. I love that. Ali's brown, therefore Ali must be from a country where, where child marriage is the thing. By the way, there are countries where child marriage is the thing. They're not civilized Western countries. Like my wife's grandmother was married, I think, when she was 13. I think the story about her uh, is is that she went out and played jump rope at her wedding. Like, that's not good. Okay, like, it worked out in the long run, but... Right? I mean, that just... This is why Western civilization is a superior place. Okay, Western civilization is a wonderful place because we don't have 30-year-old men who are trying to knock up 14-year-old girls. Um, so, M Moore's lawyer is not doing a particularly wonderful job. Uh, and then... Uh, last night, uh, or the night before last night, you remember Sean Hannity on Fox News basically gave a 24-hour ultimatum to Roy Moore. And the, uh, the ultimatum was, I need you to credibly show me why these accusations are false or you need to get out of the race. So Roy Moore sent an open letter to Sean Hannity. And the open letter is uh, not particularly good. So the, the open letter says, Dear Sean, uh, I am suffering the same treatment other Republicans have had to endure. A month prior to the general election for U.S. Senate in Alabama, I have been attacked by the Washington Post and other liberal media in a desperate attempt to smear my character and defeat my campaign. And then he talks at length about how wonderful he is. He repeats that he's been married for a long time and has grandkids, et cetera, et cetera. And then he says, we are in the, in the process of investigating these false allegations to determine their origin and motivation. For instance, we have documented that the most recent accuser, Beverly Nelson, was a party in a divorce action before me in Etowah County Circuit Court in 1999. No motion was made for me to recuse. Okay, so there's a problem with this particular allegation by Roy Moore, which is that the actual judge who was assigned to this case was not Roy Moore. Roy Moore signed, I think, one doc excuse me, one document at the very, very end of the case. She never sat in a courtroom with Roy Moore, apparently. In her accusations, Nelson did not mention I was the judge assigned to her in the divorce case in 1999, because he wasn't, apparently. A matter that apparently caused her no distress at a time that was 18 years closer to the alleged assault. Yet 18, 18 years later, while talking before the cameras about the supposed assault, she seemingly could not contain her emotions. And she says, my signature on the order of dismissal in the divorce case was annotated with the letters DA, representing the initials of my court assistant. Well, again, one of the problems is that apparently his actual court assistant of record did not have those initials at that time. So very weak defense from Judge Roy Moore in this letter to, to Sean Hannity trying to convince him not to throw him, not to throw him overboard. And then he trotted out, uh, and then he trotted out his lawyers to say that the signature in the yearbook is a fraud. Remember, we, we played the, the tape of the signature in the yearbook, the accuser showing the signature in the yearbook from Roy Moore. And then his attorney said it was a